everybody and welcome to Building Wings Studio episode number three. I'm Jennifer Russell and I'm so happy that you're here with me today. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about um, the faces that I create, uh, the ones on the canvas and how they mean so much more to me than um, just a face on a canvas or that outcome at the end. Um, as well at the end you'll find a tutorial on drawing faces with some little tips to get you started and an offering to join me for a four-week class that starts in March um, that uses the Color of Women process to create your own story painting. So my understanding of our minds is that we, are, we have our conscious mind and our subconscious mind. And our conscious mind is actually just a, just a tiny bit of the actions that we take and the way that we feel. The subconscious mind is doing most of the work in behind and we don't even realize um, what we're doing. We, can't, we don't have that in our awareness and our consciousness. So for me, whether it's creating in a journal or creating at the canvas, I am connecting to a different part of myself. I'm quieting the space around me and I am connecting more with that subconscious. So that subconscious is bubbling up and I'm I'm being aware of things or maybe noticing things that I might not have noticed before. But I do find that to, in order to do that, when I sit down at the blank page or at a canvas that I'm working on, I have to bring intention to that. Otherwise, I'm not going to get to that subconscious mind. Sometimes I just sit down to create, but other times I'm sitting down with a, with a purpose to dig a little deeper and to get some insight on things. So that's one of the big things that comes with uh, the paintings that I do. In 2014, I took a certification course called Color of Women by Shiloh Sophia McLeod. And it was a nine month intensive program where we um, created our own body of work using her process of called Color of Woman and intentional creativity, which included um, red thread circles, um, smaller projects that use intention, journaling, writing stories, uh, coming to the canvas and uh, we were trained in 13 steps to begin with the inquiry and move all the way through that to, to the finished piece where you can use your artwork as an oracle or an archetype to kind of break a feedback loop or, or skip through the conscious mind, get down past it to the subconscious and receive a message or insight from the work that you've done. One way to think of it is that the, the stories or that we tell ourselves or the limitations, whether they rise us up or bring us down, um, live outside of us, maybe in our, in our field. And they are constantly going and running us and we are acting on those whether we mean to or not, if we're not paying attention. And one way that we can get them is to take those stories, is to bring awareness to one. You know, why do I believe I'm not worthy of success? Why do I believe that I'm not worthy of love? Why um, do I believe that I can't draw? Why do I believe, why do I act um, hurt and upset when somebody says this? Why do I? so? Digging into those questions um, might take us back to a wound that we had or a story that happened to us years ago that we didn't realize we were still holding out here in our field. So what we do is we bring awareness to that story and we start to bring it onto the canvas. If, you, if you're looking behind me, this one's a little, um, is a little different, but still using a similar process, I've put my story, you can see some of my writing in behind into one of the layers. and as it comes through, there's different symbols and different language and words that comes up and um, just different things that triggered me that I might not have noticed before, before I even get to the point of sourcing a face onto my canvas. Um, so our stories then are plucked from that field and they ha are given a container, the canvas or the blank page, are a container for those stories, a safe space for you to explore them and you can change them. Your story came at you visually, probably your first time. Our visual sensory is, is one of the things that um, we rely on quite a bit. And so when that story is formed, you have that, the, you can remember it. You can remember the, 
the colors, you can remember the feelings, and then maybe you have sound and smell going on in there too. But we can put that all on the canvas and then we're taking something that was processed and bringing it back out onto the canvas in a way that you have the control, in a way that you can control it and, and modify it and see new things that you didn't see before. In the Color of Women process, uh, we are calling on those stories and giving them life. We're breathing life into them and new energy in order for us to transform them. We are um, taking what's inside and bringing it out onto the canvas and then taking it all back in in a new way. Now a bit about the process when usually the faces that you come up with are ones that you have sourced from inside. You're not using a reference. It's all, it's all very intuitive. We're not, um, we're not looking at creating a necessarily realistic face. It's your image coming out and being placed on the canvas. So you wouldn't be expecting to have a face that looks photorealistic or um, completely perfect because often, often it's the imperfections and the, maybe the flaws that you catch or the things that are um, making you unhappy. Sometimes those are the things that you can dive a little deeper into. And the great thing about working with acrylic paint is that at any time you can come back and rework that. So if that story changes or grows, you can always come back and you can touch that painting again and add to your story to transform it more. Uh, the one you see behind me is, is now that I've built sort of my own practice around it, the one behind me is not a face that is completely one from inside. I did have a reference, but at the same time, I'm also working intuitively for shadows and hair strands and the emotion on the face. Sometimes um, they come out with something that you weren't expecting at all. So this one's a little bit different, um, but I will show some pictures on the side here of other works that I've done where the, the face has come from inside. And just knowing a little bit about the face and the f uh, structure of the face, you can source some images onto your canvas that um, maybe you didn't know lived inside of you. So that being said, I'd like to invite you to a Color of Women process. Starting in March, I'm going to run a four-week Color of Women program to meet your muse and it's going to be run bi-weekly. It'll start on Friday, March 6th, and there will be four pre-recorded videos released every two weeks. And in those videos, I will guide you through the 13 steps of Color of Woman to help you to meet your muse and start to get those stories moving. So for more information on this Color of Woman offering uh, to meet your muse, click the link below. It's going to be $97 Canadian for the four weeks. It'll take us two months to get through. And uh, that works out to be, I think, around $74 in US dollars. And throughout those weeks, I'll be online to give you guidance. Even though the videos will be pre-recorded with the steps on them, I want to be available to you to help you out through, through your process, whether that's going to be questions about um, technique or if you need an art doctor to help you with something that's going on in your canvas. Um, I want to be available for you in that way. If you just need somebody to talk to about the things that are coming up, I'd like to be there to listen. And we'll also have um, some bonus art journaling throughout that time uh, for triggers that might come up for us. So I'm really excited about that offering because it's the first time that I've offered a Color of Woman process online. Um, and I'm really looking forward to sharing it with you. So I hope to see you there. But for now, please enjoy this video of uh, just some tutorials for faces. And I'd love to see what you come up with, any little doodles or any little characters that, that pop up. Sometimes they can even have some curious uh, conversations with you. So thank you very much. And until next time, be inspired. All right. So when we're drawing a face, uh, our brains like to tell us we know what we're doing because we see faces all the time. Uh, but here are some tips and tricks to think about a face. Okay. 
So the face is basically egg-shaped and when you draw the egg shape you're actually seeing this part and this part. So when you turn it into a 2D shape and you've drawn it on your page the egg shape you've made is actually starting right here. Often people draw the egg shape and put the eyes way up high when really the eyes are about halfway. Because this is the top of my head and we have to come all the way down to here. So this is the halfway point from the top of my head and the bottom, roughly. From here we have the nose, so from here to here we're looking at about halfway, I'm making all these spaces at you, halfway. And then from here to here the lips are about halfway, about a third. Okay, so you're going to put your line for the lips here. Okay, so that's the first trick. So when we're drawing a face, think, okay, my eyes are actually halfway down the head, and then I have all this space up here to fill. So you've got the forehead, and then you've got more for the hair, and the hair uh, is actually higher than the line than the line you probably drew for the head, because your hair is is on top, and it'll feel weird. It'll feel like you're drawing a floating hair, but it actually is higher than the line that you that you've drawn. Um, and that's because if a hair was wet, then it would change, change the shape. So we're starting here. Okay, eyes halfway, nose halfway between there, mouth halfway between there. Great. Now, uh, the other thing you want to look for is uh, where things are lining up. Because if you draw your eyes, and then the nose is over too far, and the lips are another way, then you're not. You're going to feel like something's off. That's the other part about our brain is it does know faces. So when something's off, it knows, but it may not be able to pinpoint exactly what that was. So some other little tips. Don't get hung up on these either. These are just some little tips to help you to navigate the face on your page. So our eyes. The corners of our eyes line up with the edges of our nose. If our eyes are straight on, our pupils line up with the corner of our lips. So that's one way to check um, if the size of your nose and your lips are proportionate to the eyes. Our eyes will actually fit, could actually have another one right here. So if you're thinking, how much space do I need to leave between my two eyes, the two corners? It's about the same as one of your eyes. So I could fit a third eye right here. Our ears, and you can feel your own face and look in a mirror, uh, it's pretty handy to have when you're working on a face, but our ears, the tips of them, when you look at me with my hair up, the tips of my ears are in line with my eyebrows, and the bottoms of my ears are in line with the bottom of my nose, if you're drawing ears on yours. My neck, uh, comes in from the ear, but it's hidden by my jawline, so it looks um, it's a little thinner at the bottom, and then our shoulders come out, but your neck, when you draw a shirt, actually kind of continues down a bit, and the shoulders are coming out from here. So far so good, clear as mud. Um, all right, so what have we covered? Head starts here, here, halfway, halfway, halfway. Um, three eyes could fit across here. Oh, here we go. Uh, under the nose, under the nose, where your nostrils are, we have these little lines. Okay, and these little lines line up with the two bumps on your lip. So I like to draw them down a little bit, really lightly, or just imagine that they're there. But you want that little M of your lip to line up with the nostrils. So they'll come up and then they'll come out. So anywhere that there's hair, there's going to be some shadow if it's coming around your face. The hair can hide the, uh, the ears. You could have your ears out a little bit. It might just cover the tips of, the tips of your ears. Um, your hair will just go whatever way you want. Often mine is blowing, so it comes sideways like this in my paintings. So the hair might come across and you'll see there's shadow 
here. We're just going to put a shadow across, and then you can add some lines for your hair to keep to keep it whimsy. And you only see a little bit uh, on this side. You could have hair that comes straight down in front, and that will also lengthen the neck, and you might not even see the shoulders anymore. And you can have hair that's behind, so your hair just kind of disappears behind the shoulders. So I hope that helps you visualize your face. There's also some tutorials on just doing a, a basic face shape because we don't want to get too hung up on this project on having a realistic face. It's really about staying loose and um, being open to the possibility to whoever this person is on your page. She's who she's meant to be. Uh, but I'd like, I just wanted to give you some tips to help you um, troubleshoot in your painting so we don't get too hung up on that because it's tricky. It is tricky. Thanks for letting me make faces at you. So let's simplify drawing a face. We're going to do it in a little under 20 steps. So let's start with the U shape, and that's going to cut off about where half the head is. So a U shape is number one. Second, if you're doing closed eyes, we're going to come in and just put the lines for the eyes. And we just start at the corner of the eye and work our way out. And the eye is just a little curved. Remember to leave some space in the middle, about enough for one eye. Next, we'll do an eyebrow. And you can have it come down the bridge of the nose if you'd like. And leave the other side without the bridge of the nose. It makes it look like there's a, a shadow on one side. You could also leave the bridge of the nose out, just do the eyebrows and add the bottom of the nose, just a line for the nose. Next we add the lips, the top lip line. Remember those two little bumps will line up with the nostrils, then the center line. You can play with the shape of the center line. Um, if you curl it up on the edge, then it makes it look like they're smiling, you can keep it neutral. Uh, you can really play with the emotion here. Next we'll add the necklines. And they come out into the shoulders. And then some hair. And then if you'd like, you can add some details to customize your face, such as necklines, earrings, you could add designs in the hair or face. It's up to you. All right, so here's another simplified face, but this time we're gonna do eyes open. So we started with the U shape, and this time for the eyes, we're starting with the top line, the arch. Then we have the iris, and if you notice, the whole circle isn't shown. And same with the pupil inside. And we leave a little bit of white um, for the reflection. Now if you're using paint with your face, then you can just add the reflection in later. Then we carry on with the eyebrows, the nose, the three lines of the lip, and then into the hair. And for this one, I made the hair blowing a bit, just for something different. Gave her a collarbone instead of a shirt and her hair is just kind of tucking around behind her neck and over to the other side and we can see one of her ears and I gave her a little bit of eyelashes and when the eyes are open I like to put in the corner and then the underline and then the eyelid that we can see behind If you want to tilt your face, it's the same steps. You're just going to put your U on an angle. Then I like to turn my paper towards me so that the face is square on so I can have the eyes level. And then we go through the, the lines. So the eyes, the nose, eyebrows, 
Uh, again, you don't have to put in the bridge of the nose if you don't want to. You can just have the shadow of the undernose. And in this one, I added a little penguin friend. Now, shadows. Um, when we're drawing, we're not really using a reference point, so uh, I want you to think about just like a universal light source. So uh, anywhere on the face that is pushed back or goes in is where those shadows will be. So that's going to be uh, around your eyes. It's going to be the sides of your face a little bit on the sides because it's coming back. Uh, definitely right here under the bottom lip, under the nose a little bit depending on the angle of, uh, of your face but for now we're just keeping it straight on but shadows here. So eyes, nose, under your mouth uh, and uh, around the hairline and under the chin. You want on the center of your forehead, the bridge of your nose, the tip of your nose, your cheeks and your chin. Now let's talk about shading. So shading is anywhere on the face that moves inwards. So around the eyes, uh, where the hairline is, our under lip, under the nose, our top lip, under the chin and the sides of the neck, sides of the face, your ears if they're showing will have a bit of shadow. And then as you move back into the hair, that will be darker and the back of the head will be darker. Highlights are anywhere that sticks out in the face. So anywhere, if you think of what's curved, we've got our eyelids, our cheeks, our forehead, the bridge of the nose, the tip of the nose, and the chin. So I hope this helps and I can't wait to see what you do.